So, Chris Bain and myself decided that we would try to put together some, some new method of teaching students the, the skills or having them continue to use the skills that they had used in the first part of the year in, in a different way that to get away from the, the more traditional sit down and take a test to explain what you know. We are sort of classically trained, traditionally trained in, in what we do and, and so it was, it was part of what we wanted to do to try to make our training be more, more useful. I think it does reflect a direction that is going to be important for educators to take. We wanted to make them build something. We wanted some tangible result, and that our thoughts were that, that if this was going to truly be critical thinking and problem solving, one of the things that we stressed all year to them, especially as ninth graders, was that we were going to only really be able to offer them help finding materials and resources and to help them take the ideas they already had and make them come to fruition. So we had a number of guidelines. We said be interdisciplinary, talk not only to your teammates, but also talk to other teachers. We told them that they needed to use the strengths that their teammates had. Uh, and finally, we said, figure it out. Well, we, were, we were very steadfast in making sure students knew that if they had technical questions or if they had artistic questions, that, that we would offer to help, help them find a, a way to solve those problems. We would not solve the problems for them. And I think, in many ways, that was one of the most important things we did. We, we decided this should be a, a group project. Uh, we, um, we found various ways to divide them up into teams. And then the process began of them figuring out what question they wanted to answer. The, the big goal was to take contemporary issues and relate them to the historical factors that we had talked about in the first and in the second half of the year. And once they were put together in teams, they were told they needed to put together a prospectus. In other words, Chris and I wanted to see what their plan was before they began getting too far along in what they were doing. Part of that was just to kind of uh, offer some guidance to them, but also Chris and I felt that having to explain and defend your work prior to actually doing it made, made the process a lot more real, a lot more immediate. So after a few weeks of preliminary research, uh, students were expected to present their prospectus in a panel discussion. All the team members would sit together and explain in their prospectus what their research question was, what the answer was to that question, how they were going to go about displaying their answer to the question, and what each individual team member was going to have to be responsible for doing. We also wanted them to anticipate what problems they would have and then explain how they were going to overcome those problems. And then they had to field questions not just from Chris and myself as they explained this, but also from their classmates. We told them the, the last sort of guideline we offered was people who come view your project, whether it's myself or Chris or other students or visitors or anyone, should be able to walk up to your project and understand what your research goal was without any explanation from you. Uh, one group um, put together a, a conversation about the impact of religion in contemporary times in the form of a Twitter uh, conversation. I, I thought it was an interesting idea to take a, a really important conversation about you know, historical religious factors and put it into a 21st century context of 140 characters per, 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 per comment. And another group wanted to explain the impact of military strategy and military weapons from ancient or Middle Ages times on contemporary events. And so uh, they embraced technology themselves and used uh, the library's new green screen room and made a video of themselves in costume uh, in front of the, the backgrounds representing the times and places that they were, they were researching. Another group did a, a, a presentation on fashion and how fashion and clothing for women reflected their changing roles throughout three different regions and three different time periods. It too was interactive in that uh, on, it, it featured uh, boards that would swing or twist and so on one side of the board would be the actual uh, costume or fashion and on the other side would be an explanation of how all that related to both ancient and contemporary times. And then the last group uh, that, that I had also embraced technology in trying to explain the importance of, of historical religion on art and uh, architecture 
they put together some 3D models. The 3D printer in the makerspace we have here was used to produce some 3D models that were examples of how architecture from ancient or medieval, uh, medieval periods informed, uh, influenced architecture today. I had a number of students that wanted to do artistic elements in their projects, so I sent them over to Kyle Mowry. Uh, she was wonderful in, it, it, it happened that the class period that I had, it was a planning period for her, so she was more than willing to have students come over, uh, ask advice, um, borrow materials, get guidance from her, and she was wonderful. Uh, Kim Daniel, same thing, as they share adjoining rooms, Kim was able to help chip in. And I think it was great. Uh, my students used the, the makerspace, and so I know that uh, Mr. Schnippert and, and, and uh, Mr. Cognetta helpful in getting, getting a way for them to, to be able to use that. Uh, it was uh, Dean Gargiulo, I know, helped with uh, Chris's groups being able to put together films and movies and, and use the green screen. And none of this would have been possible without Diane Johnston's help and the library staff. They turned over their library to Chris and myself for almost a month. They provided materials, they provided help, uh, a space, and they were very free and very welcoming. And without, without the help of all the different colleagues that Chris and I relied on, it never would have worked. But I was not prepared for the level of excellence that, that I saw as they put these things together. And, and that, that is not a reflection of low expectations, it's a reflection of just, the, just the, the remarkable testament to the students who, when given a chance to do something you know, atypical or non-traditional, uh, students really, really can, can make it worthwhile. Work, the, the expressiveness, the, the, the teamwork. I saw students who aren't typically vocal leaders I saw them lead, I saw them organize, I saw them plan. I saw students who are typically not at the forefront of what we do in class take a, a, a very important role. I, I, I don't envision abandoning every, everything I've learned. The traditional ways still have their value. But I think the more that, that educators can find different ways to do what we do, to, to find different ways to engage students in the skills that they're going to need, I think it benefits everybody. I think it's more, more useful for students to be able to express creativity, to display leadership, to be able to problem solve and overcome obstacles. Uh, and I think it's important for teachers to, to see them do that. And anything that we can do to achieve that, I think, is worth exploring. And, and our exploration in, in this context was very illuminating. And I, I think that collaboration made this project what it is. Not just collaboration between Chris and myself or between the students or among the students, but, but it, it truly was collaborative in every sense of the word. And, and I think that's really the most uh, valuable part of, for Chris and myself was that you know, we now feel ready that we can encourage other faculty members, our colleagues, to do this because we know it works. That when we help each other, we get, we get not only a great deal of of benefit for ourselves, but our students really do benefit from it. And, and I think that's been a really valuable learning experience for us.